Welcome back to The Rock Pod, presented by the Royal Oak, Michigan Chamber of Commerce. I am John Gay from Jagged Detroit Podcasts. I am Lisa Bibby, your neighborhood realtor with Keller Williams Advantage. Our third co-host, Trish Carruth, not able to be with us today, but she is the owner of Your Personal Jeweler. Today, our guest is Dan Fisher from Citizens State Bank. Dan, great to be with you. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Let's start at the beginning, Dan. How long have you been with the bank and what's your role and title there? Yeah, I've been with the bank since September 2020, and uh, I'm the president, CEO, as well as uh, on the board of directors. Can you tell us a little bit more about what relationship banking is? Sure. Our institution is a is a small private bank, and um, we're actually one of the oldest institutions in the state of Michigan. We were founded in 1910. Our team purchased the bank back in June of 2020. And our vision was to really preserve the um, personal service and feeling of a small hometown bank. The bank was founded up in Ontonag in Michigan, but then to relocate the headquarters and then expand the bank down in Southeast Michigan and Oakland County here in Royal Oak. So our strategy and our value proposition really is that of being very personalized on all fronts. So we're a relationship-driven institution, All of our business comes from referrals. We try to really customize our banking services for our customers, whether they be commercial customers or consumers, and really try to have that, you know, old town bank feel with a modern technology platform. And, you know, this time of year, as we go into the holidays and a lot of people watch Our Wonderful Life and Jimmy Stewart (laughs) and the old savings and loan company. And so we want people to feel like that um, when they come into our bank. But also, um, when you walk into our bank in Royal Oak, and we certainly hope some people come and visit us, it's a very impressive facility. It it really does look like a very high-end private banking institution, but it also has a very warm feel to it. And um, we have an amazing technology stack, and really that was part of our mission so that customers, especially because we opened in the tail end of COVID, is that if people don't want to come to the bank and want to do everything through the internet and our mobile app platforms, whether they be business or personal, they can do that. Um, But if they want to come in and meet with a person and sit down face to face and talk about a loan or see how we can help them manage their money, um, we make that, you know, available to them, not only during our working hours, but after hours by appointment. I think that's so important in today's world, this hybrid uh, in-person and online stuff. I know that, you know, I do a lot of banking online, but occasionally there's something I need an actual person for. From having been to the ribbon cutting at Citizen State Bank recently, I can vouch for what Dan is saying as far as the uh, facility and how nice it is. You know, as we hopped on our call here before we started recording, Dan, Lisa noticed the uh, portrait or the painting of the bull and the bear behind you. Uh, Very appropriate in these times. Tell us, Dan, a little bit about your background before coming to Citizens only a couple of years ago. Yeah, sure. So I've been in banking for 35 years. I know I don't look like I'm as old as as I just said I am, but... uh, No, you don't. Thank you. No, I've been in this business for 35 years, and um, I've worked in some larger financial institutions, you know, super regional banks, national banks, and, you know, really uh, have settled into community banking as I am at the tail end of my career. I just really like the personalization of being in a smaller institution. So I've done everything from run a a very large division of a super regional bank to really run a a $20 billion institution. I've done a lot of mergers and acquisitions. I've been in the mortgage banking industry and private banking and commercial banking and corporate banking, um, and then in the investment side. So I've tried to take my knowledge and experience in in informing a strategy for this bank that really just delivers a very unique value proposition based on customer service, based on customization, and really common sense. You know, we really don't like a lot of bureaucracy around here. So if a customer (laughs) comes in and they're looking for a loan, we can get them a quick decision, um, whether it's yes or no. And we really do try to understand what they're trying to accomplish with their business and where they're trying to take their company and share their vision. And so we actually go out and visit the business and get to know them personally, as well as their employees and really try to help them over the longer term. And our business has exploded really in the last year since we opened our headquarters here in Royal Oak. And I think a lot of that has to do with all of the referrals that we're getting from happy customers. 
So Dan, you mentioned in moving to this bank that you were coming up with new strategies uh, as far as customer care. Can you talk to us about one strategy that you really are liking and wanting to implement? Yeah, I mean, I think the new strategies and old strategies, I think one of the things that I realize, you know, as I'm, you know, getting a little older and mature in life that I really value customer service and uh, the value of a good salesperson who really knows their field. And uh, I think we've kind of lost that to a certain extent. And even in the larger banks today, a lot of the people who are loan officer positions or commercial lenders, they really don't have any lending authority. So we're really trying to bring the decision making back close to the customer, as well as have a lot of sophisticated products and services. So, for example, you're in the real estate business, you know, I would tell you that portfolio lending is something that is not, I would say, a new strategy, but it's one that's kind of gone by the wayside. And so if we have a customer that comes in for, say, a residential mortgage or a consumer loan debt consolidation loan, and they've had a life event or something that may prevent them from doing the kind of boilerplate standard Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac consumer loan. Sure. You know, they don't fit into the box, (laughs) but they're good people, you know, that we have an understanding of their story and we know they have the ability to pay monthly today. Um, So we customize a loan program for them, whether it's a short term program, two years till they can refinance into a secondary market product or create a longer term program for them that will really help them achieve their goal, whether it be home ownership or debt consolidation, you know, just really try to help people while providing a good solid loan for our balance sheet that gives us a good interest rate yield, um, which is how banks make money, right? I mean, we take deposits in, we loan that money out. The spread is how banks make money. You know, a lot of times if we do something for a customer, um, and I help people out all the time that have unique situations, you know, I ask them, you know, hey, part of the deal is we really need you to help our bank grow. So we need you to send us some referrals. Yeah. Go out and tell people about what we've done for you and how it's made a difference in your life. And please send us some, you know, referrals, whether it's be your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your cousin, (laughs) your neighbor, people you work with. Tell them about Citizen State Bank and how we approach the business. And that will help us. And Dan, I love that you mentioned portfolio lending because there's a lot of, especially small business owners who cannot get pre-approved on your typical standard home loan. And I love that you're able to sit down with them, meet with them, really look at their full in-depth financials and set up a strategy on how you could help them purchase a home. I appreciate that, Lisa. And, you know, you asked for something specific from a strategic perspective. So just give you a real quick example that kind of ties into what you just said. So like interest rates have gone up, you know, 4% since the first of the year, Federal Reserve's moved the prime rate and then the 10-year treasury, which is what dictates mortgage rates, has really moved quite a bit. So we immediately pivoted and created an interest-only product for buyers. We realized that the um, yield curve is inverted right now. And really what that means is short-term rates are higher than long-term rates. So if you're getting a residential mortgage or you're getting a commercial loan, it's just kind of a very strange situation right now. Mortgage rates have gone up significantly, but commercial loan rates have gone up even more. So for a self-employed borrower who's trying to buy a house, maybe they don't qualify now under traditional terms with rates being higher, but with an interest only payment, they can still afford to purchase the house knowing that, okay, they're not going to pay principal down. But at some point when the curve is no longer inverted and rates come back down, which I do believe they will, you know, it gives them an opportunity then to come back to us and we'll either do a modification to the loan agreement and give them a more favorable loan with amortization, you know, or just convert that interest only payment to an amortizing loan. So it's really helped not only our realtor partners, but customers who were maybe in the process of building a home or had to move um, and find a place. But, you know, their payments were going up a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month on a 30 year fixed. So now they can have that same payment that they were planning on. And, you know, of course, they have to have cash down. You know, you can't have all of the things that you want in life, right? We all know that. You can't have 5% down and terrible credit and get an interest-only loan at 95% loan-to-value with no mortgage insurance. So that, you know, those things don't happen. But we try to work with people on that. And um, in the case where we have somebody who doesn't have 20% down, we'll do like what's called a piggyback program where we'll give them 
you know, the 80% first mortgage, and then we'll do a second with a more aggressive amortization, like 10 years on it. And we try to give them a decent rate on that. So they start paying principal on that second, you know, more aggressively. So then say in five years, they almost have that thing paid off, or at least they just have principal remaining on the second. It's kind of a, a little bit of a scary time being a banker, even though I've been doing it a long time. You know, the interest rates have gone up and housing prices have gone up so significantly, you know, here over the last couple of years, especially in this area. And now the question is, are housing prices going to stabilize? Or are they going to go back down because of what's happening in the economy from a recessionary perspective? You know, nobody really knows the answers to those questions, but when you run a bank and you manage a balance sheet, you have to take all those things into consideration, especially if you're doing portfolio loans and um, you're not getting a big down payment. If the housing market were to move 10 or 20% in the negative direction, you know, then people have no equity in their homes. Dan, I think it's, you know, pretty telling about your attitude and your perspective and your mission at Citizen State Bank that we spent kind of the first half of this podcast really talking about relationships in the customer service piece of things. But obviously you're a bank, you've been doing this a long time. You, we live in, I don't want to say unprecedented times. I feel like you have to take a shot every time somebody says unprecedented the last two years. In the second half of this podcast, we're starting to get into some of the uh, the dollars and cents piece of this, which again, it's a scary time for a lot of people. We've talked about the yield curve. What about money market accounts and where are those at right now? Really, in the history of my career, I've never seen this type of a situation with an inverted curve. So not only have short-term rates gone up faster than long-term rates and the curve is inverted, but cost of funds. For a long time, you were paying low interest rates when you were borrowing, but you weren't getting anything on your money if it was sitting in the bank. If it was in your checking account, you got like 0. 0.001, right. right? You didn't get anything. And if you right. was in a money market account... You know, you might have got 50 basis points or half of a percent if you had the best money market rate in the country. And that actually was one of our strategies when we rolled out the bank was to really compete with an online money market account, you know, and lead the country along with companies like Goldman Sachs and, and uh, American Express on the money market side. But those money market rates now are just under 4%. Hmm. So they've gone from, you know, half a percent to around 4%. That's directly a function of where the one-year and the two-year treasury bills are. You know, the one-year treasury is around four, the two years around four and a half. And so whether it's public funds or it's consumer funds, you're competing against those short-term treasury bills when you price your money markets. So we have adjusted our money market rates up quite a bit. You know, we try to be fair and pay everyone, regardless of their balance, a decent rate. But obviously, the higher balance money market accounts are the ones that are getting the, you know, the much higher rates Um, because banks are um, we went from having lots of liquidity to having very little liquidity. Sure. And uh, without getting too complicated, it's just common sense, right? Interest rates rise, cost of money and borrowing goes up significantly. So people use their cash. Right. Why would you borrow and pay seven, eight, nine percent when or on credit cards now, 18, 19, 20 percent when you can just use your savings, you know, or whatever disposable cash you have? Well, it sounds like you've had a fascinating career in both money markets and banking. And I was curious, how do you spend your time when you're not working? We'd love to get to know you personally a little bit more. Sure. Well, I do work a lot and a little bit of an interesting situation. I guess I I have a home in Ohio. I uh, was running a bank down there, which I sold in 2019. So I have a seven acre home that I built down on the river in Ohio and I uh, commute back and forth. So I also own a home here in Beverly Hills. And I have kind of a blended family with eight children and three dogs. Wow. Wow, it's the Brady Bunch. It is. It is. Actually, I think we have the Brady Bunch beat by uh I think by so, two, yeah. Um, <laughs> with eight, yeah. So I live a very exciting life. We always have lots of stuff going on with the kids. And uh, I have kids uh, ranging from 32. My oldest is getting her PhD at Ohio State. And uh, my youngest is nine. We have lots of action at our house. One of my dogs lives up here with me full time, and uh, she also works at the bank and is the chief morale officer for the bank, and her name is Poppy. Poppy's an overachiever. My dog is my chief napping officer. Yeah, she does take a nap in the afternoon, but you can usually find her, especially if the sun is shining in the front door of the bank. She's on the mat in the afternoon, um, laying right by the door. So be careful if you come in, you have to step over her. Love that. Love that. (laughs) 
Dan, you know, you mentioned you've only been there a couple of years, having recently opened the branch over there on Woodward. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship with the Royal Oak Chamber and what that's meant to the bank thus far. Yeah, the Royal Oak Chamber is great. Um, I just actually this morning came from the board meeting. I've recently joined the board. I'm very excited to be part of that. And, you know, I've moved around over my career over the many years. I've lived in a lot of different cities and I've always felt like it was a responsibility as a bank CEO, community bank CEO to be involved in the community. So I've been on many chamber boards in my uh, my long career. So that was one of the first things that I took a look at here. And we belong to a multiple boards at the bank, but being headquartered in Royal Oak and we are the only bank that's headquartered in Royal Oak really felt like it was important for us to support that business community. Um, Certainly our value proposition, being owned by an entrepreneur, um, because we have a single shareholder owner Mm. who is an entrepreneur, that we we do cater to small businesses. And um, the Chamber of Commerce is a very, very important part of the small business community in every community, whether it's Royal Oak or, you know, Ferndale or Berkeley or wherever. And so being involved as a banker in the chamber, I feel is like a responsibility as well as a benefit to the bank. We get lots of networking opportunity. We we share information. We get lots of exposure, um, but we also try to help advise our customers and our fellow chamber members, be a resource for them, um, be an opportunity for them to benefit from the fact that we are local here and uh, that we can help. We get some support from the um, local city government. Royal Oak is a customer and um, a lot of the people that we've met through the chamber have um, come into the bank to support us and we really appreciate that. But the chamber is all about, you know, the community and um, it's a networking opportunity. It's an opportunity for people to share their businesses and their services. But it is a core voice in uh, the community and certainly uh, impacting the legislation that takes place and, and all the things that are happening, you know, from a personal residence perspective, as well as from a business perspective. Well, thank you. We love supporting our community and everybody who is involved in the chamber. And now it is time for our fishbowl question of the day, okay. where we pull a totally random question for you. So, John, can you pull our fishbowl question of the day? All right. Let's uh, reach in here and take a look. <laughs> okay. Dan, what is the most selfish thing you do that you're okay with? What is the most selfish thing that I do that I'm okay with? With eight kids and you said three dogs, I don't know if you have much time to yourself, but yeah, I'd love to know what you find is selfish and okay to do. Well, and the disclaimer here is that you are so generous with your time and getting involved with the bank and the community and helping so many people. There's got to be something in your life where you're allowed to be a little bit selfish on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, One of the benefits of being a... uh bank CEO is I get a nice golf club membership along with the deal. Um, so that's kind of my vice when I ever I do have some time. Uh, I like to get out and play some golf. And that's something that I do for myself. But I do find a way to incorporate it into business. Um, so I, I uh, often play <laughs> golf um, with customers and prospects, as well as other people that I try to partner with in the community. So I do combine that. But when I'm on the golf course, I try to enjoy the environment and the fresh air and the sunshine. And uh, so I don't talk a lot of business out on the golf course. And I certainly turn off my phone. Yes. um, Which I don't often do. um, But that's probably what I do more so. And then um, a couple of my Kids are older, too, so my boys always come up here for, my adult boys always come up here for Father's Day, and we we always play golf, so I enjoy that a lot, and um, also make sure I take a couple of family vacations every year um, with the kids and without the kids, so that's always always important. Eric, that's important, that differentiation. For sure. (laughs) Where are you planning to go on a vacation this year? You know, my wife and I are trying to figure that out. Um, the kids are coming up here. I'm remodeling my house in Beverly Hills, so they're going to be spending most of the summer up here, which I'm really looking forward to. But uh, my wife and I are looking for a place to go, and I think we're probably going to go someplace out west. She wants to go see the mountains, and she likes to hike. Last year, we went to Arizona. I came back. I was exhausted because we went to the Grand Canyon, and we went to Sedona, and we yeah. drove like 500 miles. and. I was like, I want to go someplace and relax. So we'll see. 
a vacation from your vacation. Absolutely. Dan, if, uh, if folks want to know more about Citizen State Bank, what are the best ways to find you? I think the best way to, to really get the feel for what we're all about is to walk in the front door and come and see us. We have lots of great people working here. And you can also go to our website, which is micsb.com. And uh, there's some great information on there. We are in the process of updating that, um, as most companies do. As you grow and as you refine your business plan, you continue to update your website. So we're working on that. And uh, again, we are always at the chamber functions, certainly in Royal Oak. Um, We try to sponsor as many of those as we can. And I'm usually there along with my team. So if you see us at a chamber event, you know, come on up to me and... Love to meet you and, uh, you know, love to uh, get an opportunity to uh, talk about the bank. It's been so great to have you on, Dan. And my name is Lisa Bibby, and I am a realtor with Keller Williams Advantage. I put the real back in realtor. The market is shifting, yet there are still niche markets and low inventory. Looking to get top dollar for your house? Give me a call, or you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Sold by Lisa B. I am John Gay from Jag in Detroit Podcast. I believe that nobody knows your story better than you, and I can help you tell it. If you like the way this show sounds, want me to create a podcast for your business, or have any questions at all about podcasts, you can find me online at jagindetroit.com. Also, a shout out to our third co-host not able to be here today. That is Trish Carruth from The Personal Jeweler. You can find her online at thepersonaljeweler.com. We want to thank you for listening to this episode of The Rock Pod, produced for the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce. For more information about chamber events or how to get involved with the chamber, you can visit royaloakchamber.com. Thanks, everyone. 